Hi, Doel, how are you? I'm great, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Of course, I, I know you from a couple of years back. Before we dive into personetics and I have tons of questions, we have enough time. A lot of people are curious about this company. I want to know about yourself, even stuff that you did before, so people will get a little bit of a background about you. Yeah, so I've, sta I've started my banking career something like almost 12 years ago. I used to work for, some, for several years at the management consultancy and the research companies uh, here in Israel and some, uh, some of the global ones. So I, that, that's where I, I think I've gained a lot of information and a lot of experience and expertise working with um, you know, uh, C-level people, uh, mostly in the banking, also in the insurance industry. And then I moved into Bank Lumi uh, to um, start to work on the innovation uh, department and to lead these efforts and, uh, of course, uh, launching some great initiatives. Um, internally within Bank Lumi, um, you know, all the Lumi tech activities, the Pepper and some other things, working internally and, and globally, so it was really interesting. And then I moved into um, KPMG, which one of the largest uh, global, uh, you know, uh, advisory firms. Um, as a managing director, I was uh, I walked around the, the space of, um, you know, again, financial services, advisory uh, around technology and strategy, mostly uh, actually uh, outside of Israel, most of my work was uh, as a part of the KPMG global uh, fintech practice and the financial advisory. So again, traveling all over the world, uh, working with a lot of uh, great innovative banks, uh, digital banks, regular banks, insurance companies. I've done some, some work here in Israel. Um, and then uh, again, another move uh, into this triangle in the fintech space. We also have the triangle of the investors and the advisors and the vendors um, so now I'm in the vendor space after I've been in the client space and in the investment or the advisory space. Now I'm in the, in the vendor space. So I'm almost keeping, you know, my three, uh, you know, uh, steps in the triangle, uh, three corners. Um, so now for the last two and a half years, almost I'm working at Personetics at the v, as the VP strategy in global business development. Um, and really, you know, enjoying, uh, doing that. Yes. And Personetics, I mean, I mean, I, I was recommended by Viola. Uh, to talk with Personetics, but I know Personetics because all my talks with banks around the world, I keep hearing this company and, and, and good things about the company and, and what you're doing. So tell me, what is Personetics and how, why is it so important to all these banks around the world? So Personetics is, um, um, is a 10 years old growth fintech company. So we are not a small one. We are about 230, 250 uh, employees in eight uh, global offices. So we are really a truly global um, you know, a company uh, with uh, not just sales people, also delivery and project managers all over the world. Um, the company was uh, founded by a serial entrepreneur, so this is not their first company, it's actually their third. They were also the founders of uh, Actimize, which is a very famous company in the uh, KYC uh, money laundering space. Um, so two serial entrepreneurs, David Govrin and David Sosna. So this is their third company, um, and um, and again um, we are backed by the world largest you know VCs like Sequoia and Lightspeed from Silicon Valley, and Ike Partners from New York and Viola from Israel. We also have two banks as investors, which is really important. So Santander, one of the largest banks in Europe, is one of our investors, and UOB, which is the third largest bank in Southeast Asia, um, and the company is actually being perceived as a global category leader in the space of. Uh, data-driven personalization and customer engagement for financial services. We are working only with financial institutions, mostly on the banking space. We have, uh, of course, we provide a white label uh, personalized engagement platform. Um, and we are really, you know, working already with over 55 global top tier banks all over the world, uh, from the largest banks in Japan, in Singapore, in Australia, uh, Taiwan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea, um, um, you know, um, Thailand. We're working all over Europe. We started to work in South Africa. We're working with the largest banks, uh, I think like seven of the 12 largest banks in North America, including in Canada and Mexico. Now we started to work in Brazil. We are about to, to open actually a local office there. So um, as, as, a, as a global category leader, we are really trying to help banks with one of the biggest issues, which is actually how to uh, leverage their own biggest assets, their own uh, customers, financial transactional data, which is the biggest gold mine of banks, how to actually leverage that in order to truly drive uh, quickly market differentiation and business impact. So this is our space, really helping banks to truly become much more smart, proactive and knowledgeable with their own clients and helping their own clients actually to better manage their financial life, to stay on top of their finance, 
And by doing so to increase, of course, customers' engagement and trust, and of course, the ability to better sell and service these customers. Now, under the COVID-19, you know, when there is a over 31% increase in digital banking usage just in, just in the last nine months, and when open banking or actually open finance is becoming a global market standard, already is being approved by over 50 countries globally, and when digital transformation is really becoming right now the first priority for CEOs, not just for CIOs within bank, which is mostly around, you know, increasing customer experience and data-driven engagement, we are a natural fit for any bank, for any credit card company, for any insurance company globally that are really trying, you know, to boost their own personalization capabilities in months versus years. It's not a build versus buy. We are actually complementing internal capabilities. We provide a very open, flexible, end-to-end um, uh, uh, -end strategic platform that really helps banks to even accelerate their own innovation. And we, I think um, the reason that we are going so fast and becoming the category leader, because I think we are solving a very inherent, important, crucial um, issue right now for banks all over the world. How to stay on top of their customers' life, how to really drive higher level of business outcomes when it comes to account and balance growth, uh, click-through ratios on conversion rates, um, uh, retention rates. So anything around the relationship between banks and their customers in a smart, proactive, frictionless, seamless way, uh, and the, the ability to really drive uh, you know, the impact of that. This is where we are focusing mostly on the retail banking space, like mass market, small business, mass affluent, um, and card holders. Um, and I think you know, this is a place that we are really excited, really excited because we think that we are really helping customers. In the end of the day, we are not just helping banks, we are actually helping the end, their own customers to increase their own financial well-being, financial resilience, which is so important right now. So, for example, helping them uh, saving money or helping them understand their finance better in an engagement uh, way, engaging way. Yeah, but it's even much more than that because we are not just highlighting ideas to the customers. We are not just saying, hey, Neil, something is coming up or you have a duplicated charges or people like you are saying. It's not just highlighting ideas. It's actually providing you a real-time, fully multi-channel product-based advice. What is the best option for you? How much you should save? What is the best card for you to use right now? What is the best product or service or loan that you should use right now? And it's, it's a financial data driven. So we are not just looking on a very high level marketing logic based. This is actually according to the real time on the transactional level, on the customer level, financial behavior. So we are working on a real time solution that really truly understand customers in real time. We are categorizing all of their financial transactional data, even wow. from internal bank accounts. So we are able to really truly understand the customer's holistic, aggregated financial view. And then we're also enriching the data to really truly understand what they've done with their spending. We are able even to predict up to a month in advance what they are going to do, where they are going to do that. And then by using our over three dozen of patent protected AI and machine learning models, we are able to truly drive in the real time at the right channel, um, the right personalized engagements and the right personalized messages to help customers with their day-to-day -day financial lives and even helping banks to do it for them, to think and act in behalf of their customers. Think about self-driving cars. So we believe in a self-driving finance or actually autonomous bank banking. We believe that's the next step um, in banking uh, relationship with their customers. Because, you know, in the end of the day, customers, they care about dreams and needs. I want a bigger house. I want a bigger car. I want to take my kids to Disney World, hopefully, next summer. But I want my bank as my uh, middleman in, in between me and my personal or financial goals. I want my bank to be there for me, to help me seamlessly, frictionally, almost invisible to help me to achieve my financial goals. And we believe that banks they have the right trust issue and the brand capabilities to do it in behalf of their customers. So even helping you, Neil, to automatically save for the future in a self-adjustable uh, automated way or to cut a debt or invest. So we are really excited about our ability to really take this whole um, trajectory of how banks are deliver delivering uh, the relationship with clients and monetizing them. And how many customers are you serving globally? Just so I'll get. 
So through our 55 or 50 global banks that we are working with them, mostly top tier ones, uh, we are reaching today over 90, 90, 90 million uh, end clients all over the world. Again, small business, wealth management, uh, mass market or credit cards. And we are really growing dramatically fast right now. I think the COVID-19 with all the tragedy around that, it's also an amazing catalyzator for banks to rethink, really rethink about their digital strategy, what they want to achieve, what is the relationship, how they are going to monetize that, how they are going to drive all of that through their digital and non-digital channels and how they are going to do that. Um, and I think, you know, hyper-personalization is becoming the battleground for banks all over the world. And it's really about, you know, collaboration. It's not really any kind of internal developments. Um, and we are really doubling down on that space with a lot of great clients. We're also expanding our uh, uh, solutions with bank. We, are, we actually have seven different business solutions. So our growth strategy is actually land and expand within even our existing clients. Amazing. I, you know, I, I totally understand the, the game here because I interviewed so many bank CEOs and founders and they are telling me about uh, the pain and the challenge from the bank's perspective, even to keep people on, inside of the app. That is kind of a boring, you know, thing, right? Yeah. I think in the end of the day, you know, uh, banks are, you know, they're dealing with uh, basic stuff, you know, uh, loans, deposits, uh, payments, uh, you know, and investments. But the idea is, to, is really, you know, customers, they're spending a lot of their time, you know, dealing with their own finances, right? So how banks can truly um, increase uh, the optimal, uh, you know, uh, monetization of that and how they can really drive value. And I think, you know, banks historically, they move from a, from a product-based into a customer base, into a database, right? Um, how they are really based on their own customer's data in real time. And I think the only way to really stay relevant in the market uh, for banks and to really drive value or, or increase with all the economical pressure to really increase value with their clients is only through, you know, those kind of um, uh, data-driven personalized engagement really drives a much better trust and proactive engagement and by increasing the trust, the likelihood of customers to actually convert and buy services or products from the banks, it's much higher. So I'm not expecting my bank to order, to order uh, me a pizza or to order me a taxi. But when it comes to my basic financial life, I want my bank to be there for me. I want my bank to help me to increase my financial resilience. And I want my bank to become my real-time, cool friend, invisible, trusted advisor. And that's what we are trying to help banks all over the world to do. Something else I saw on your on your website, I saw something about the chatbots and con conversational AI. What can you tell me about that? So we've done a lot of work in the chatbots. Uh, we're already active in several markets in all sorts of places. We are using our own proprietary chatbot with our own NLP and NLU. Uh, for example, we've done a great installation with RBC, the largest bank in Canada, with our own chatbot in 12 different languages, you know, to support wow. all the languages in Canada. And I think chatbot, um, the way that we are seeing that is in the market, it's a crucial in integrated part as a part of our, our proposition. So it's not a standalone, you know, app, just ask, you know, some very basic questions, where is the nearest ATM or how much money I have in my bank account. It's actually another service uh, channel uh, for us as a client uh, uh, um, to better communicate with the bank uh, when we are on the go, when we don't have time right now to, um, to, 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 to log in or to see something or to get any kind of a push. And we are using our chatbot uh, differently from other vendors because it's integrated within the proposition to also provide a smart interactions, engagement, financial data driven insights, not just basic stuff. And when it's integrated as another channel, like the bank health channel, like mobile or push notifications or email or web, then it makes sense in a very holistic, uh, synergetic way. Wow. A any other uh, trends or updates or partnerships that you can mention that you did recently? Yes, I heard about the, the bank from Canada also. Yeah, so we, I mean, as a partnership, you know, um, as a growth company, we are working with over 15 global partners, the world largest ones, you know, from Salesforce to Microsoft to um, Oracle, IBM, all the biggest, you know, um, consultancy companies and system integrators. So we just, uh, there, there was an announcement, I think yesterday about Visa partnering with Personetics on a global level. We are doing some great stuff uh, with Visa right now. Um, and there are some other, uh, 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 some other much more local geographical announcements coming up. We are doing a lot of work with core banking systems providers 
Um, so a lot of banks, as a part of their digital transformation, they're thinking about their own spaghetti infrastructure and how they are going to mod modernize that at some level. And when banks are doubling down on that space, they're also looking on about, you know, personalized engagement. So it makes sense for us to also uh, do a lot of work with the Infosys of the world um, and the Oracle um, 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 and, and even the new um, core banking system providers, the Thought Machine and the Mambo and whatever, whatever. So we are doing a lot of work in that space. I think because we are providing very, we are the brain between the front end channels and the back end channels and we are able to quickly integrate uh, through a cloud installations or through on-prem installation, um, and it's it's completely GDPR data privacy compliant. We do not hold, we do not store any data. It's real-time analysis. It's very easy, I think, to work with us, and we are able to quickly demonstrate, uh, you know, uh, a proven uh, impact. So yes, in terms of our, our partners, we are doing a lot of work. We have local partners and global partners. In terms of announcements, um, there's a lot of announcements that we have done. Um, mostly in the uh, European um, um, in the uh, in the US region, uh, we have some really great, exciting uh, announcements coming up right now from Asia with some of the world's largest banks. I can't uh, still announce it, but we are going to do that. I think um, there is a Singapore fintech festival coming up, and we are going to do some announcement there. So yeah, really looking forward. And I think 2021, uh, with all the pand pandemic and people not flying and everything, at least in our space in the digital banking space on a broader term, I think it's gonna be a great year. Banks are really pushing, you know, hitting the pedal to the metal. Um, and it's really affecting, of course, a great, um, you know, area like us. So you are already global and you mentioned so many uh, deals and partners. And I, I, I'm like thinking, is it something that, you know, you have to pay attention locally in terms of the behavior of the people? How, you, how does your brain function on a local market that is out there in some countries? So I think that's a really good point, Neil, because it's always global, you know, the, the combination of global and local uh, become a global company, a true global company, if you don't have local offices, not just for salespeople, not, not just to sit in a WeWork, but actually like local delivery um, product people speak the local language, understand the local culture, and really able to, um, to deliver the right um, you know, uh, capabilities locally. I, because, you know, this is not a cookie cutter, what we are providing, and it requires localization, and it requires understanding the local financial behavior in each kind, it's each one of the markets, each one of the segments. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, focus from the resources, from the, tech, from the agility of the technology to do that, from the ability to really, you know, fine tune our analytical models to create the local content. One of the things that we are doing, for example, Neil, we are actually we have three big assets in our platform. The first one, we know we, how to access financial transactional data and how to clean it, categorize, and reach it, and analyzing that on the fly. That's one thing. But the second thing is actually providing a rich content out of the box. We have today, as an example, over 300 of out of the box, fully tested and verified day-to-day -day personalized insights, alerts, recommendations, financial advice, product advice, even automated financial wellness program but we don't hold all the brain. So we are also providing our clients actually a codeless management uh, and creation console. So our clients by themselves, after we are training them, without relying on data scientists or anything like that, we are giving them the ability to quickly, not just modifying all the existing content, but even create new content completely by themselves, codeless. They don't need to code anything. They have all, all their capabilities so they can actually truly adapt to market changes, they can modify all the content according to real-time um, change in financial behavior with their clients, and they can really provide the end-zone localization. So instead of us doing that, we are providing the Lego bricks and the capabilities for our clients to even do that by themselves. They are taking a big chunk of our, you know, out-of-the-box catalog. They are testing that in the market, and then they are keep creating by themselves a lot of great content. We've done it, for example, with uh, in Korea. So Korea, it's a very interesting market. Uh, we are live with a Hyundai card, one of the largest credit card companies. They took uh, something like 90, 90 uh, out of the box, you know, uh, credit cards related personalized uh, insights and advice from our library, and then they kept developing by themselves dozens of new content. They connected that with external data sources like a uh, Korean Air or a, a, a food chain 
uh, 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 retail network with their own external data, even from the directly from the post, from the point of sales, and they'll keep creating and keep innovating by themselves. And I think that's the right platform approach. We provide the capabilities, we provide a full end-to-end, -end, but we're also providing the platform so our customers can truly uh, accelerate their own innovation and adapt to market changes. Amazing. A lot of things that I didn't know, for example, so it's good that you uh, mentioned. How can people find out more about the company and, and really start, you know, uh, working with you? Because this is amazing. It's, uh, you know, it's working, it's, it's proof, you know, you have success all over the world. So, you know, the best way is www.personetics.com. Um, there's a lot of information there, a lot of case studies. Um, I think we are really high profile company. There's a lot of research uh, uh, around us. Um, and every week there is something in Finex or an American banker or whatever about us. And we are really open and we would love to, uh, to speak with banks all over the world. I think our pricing model is, is, is becoming agile and much more flexible. And we are able to work with all sorts of, of size of banks uh, from small ones to big ones. Uh, we are working on an annual license fee according to the amount of the digital customers. So it's easy to, um, to, to manage that. And we would love to have, uh, you know, discussions uh, with, with financial institutions all over the world. I'm sure lots of them are, are watching us and would love to connect also with, with you personally. I guess LinkedIn is a good way because that's how I communicated with you, right? Yeah. yeah. Good, uh, good to reach you over there. Um, thank you very much. I, I, I love the, the company. I think it's great. And again, because of all the conversations that I had, I know that uh, the brain that you're building there and the, the value proposition is, is enormous for, for these uh, fintechs and, and banks around the world. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe we're gonna have uh, an interview for the next announcement for the next year, because I know that you're building up new, new products, right? And new announcements. Yes, correct. So uh, I'd love to have you uh, again. Thank you very, very much for uh, being a part of, of the FinTech Week. Thank you, appreciate that. Bye, take care. Bye.